and an incredible privilege to have each and every one of you sharing in the service with us on today. We don't take it lightly, nor do we take it for granted, and we praise the Lord for each and every last one of you. Well, turn your Bible this morning to the book of Romans chapter 5 as we share today in the Word of God, the book of Romans chapter 5 to Alicia and Bruce, amen, Edward and Carol there, and California, Leroy and Carolyn Fountain, your brother Carolyn and California, amen, brother Jerry, brother Creighton, brother sister Floyd there and Kenna, sister Bacchus in South Carolina, God bless each and every last one of you, Dr. Matheny, Beverly, amen, uh, uh, God bless each and every one of you. Romans chapter 5, I want you to look at with me verses 12 through 15 of that chapter. Sister Duellen on the North Shore, God bless you and may God keep you. Romans chapter 5, I want you to look at with me verses 12 through 15 of that chapter. Romans chapter 5. And verses 12 through 15 of that chapter, Bill and Miss Ethel, God bless you. Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. If you have it, please say amen. I heard that, amen. You'll find these similar words, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, debt rang from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Verse 15, but the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense, Adam, many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Our Father and our God, Master, we thank you and we praise you for the privilege and the opportunity you've given us to be in the Lord's house on this, the Lord's day. God, I pray right now for everybody watching under the sound of my voice. For the members of Franklin Avenue Baptist Church, for all the guests that are watching, for people watching all over our nation, for the Franklin Away members there in Houston, there in Dallas, there in Birmingham, God, all over this nation. Bless them collectively and individually. I lift up our sick and shedding, God. I lift up our seniors. I pray for this congregation, God. I pray your blessings upon them collectively, individually. Touch them, God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Now, God, as always, stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my voice as I share in the Word of God. God, that you may be glorified, the saints of God may be edified, Satan may be horrified, and lost sinners will come to repentance. And God, when it's all said and done, we're so very careful to give your name all the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name we pray and for us say, let people of God say, amen, amen, amen. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world and debt through sin and thus debt spread to all men because all have a sin. With that text in mind, with that scripture in mind, with this day and time that we're living in, in mind, I want to preach this morning to Williams from the subject, another deadly virus. Another deadly virus. So suppose when brothers and sisters, it is hard to believe that we are going into the 11th week of the coronavirus. Pastors, it's hard to believe that we're going into the 11th week of this national pandemic. It's hard to believe that today is the 12th Sunday that I have stood in this pulpit to preach to empty seats all over this sanctuary. It's hard to believe that today is the 12th Sunday that our worship service is being broadcast exclusively on our social media platforms, on our website, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, at FABC NOLA. This is the 12th Sunday that we're sharing our worship service 
live stream. It's hard to believe that today is the 12th Sunday that Pastor Albert Williams has not been able to have worship service with our children in Children's Church. It's hard to believe, but today is the 12th Sunday that Pastor Will Lord has not been able to have a worship service with our youth and young adults in our youth church. It's hard to believe that today is the 12th Sunday that Pastor Janelle Thomas has not been able to teach our new members class in new members class. It's hard to believe that today is the 12th Sunday that we have not been able to be led in our devotional services by our deacons and by our deaconess. Ladies and gentlemen, it's hard to believe that today is the 12th Sunday and Minister Key James and our dedicated Sunday school teachers have not been able to teach their Sunday school lessons before and after our 9 a.m. worship service and classes all over this building. It's hard to believe that today is the 12th Sunday that our greeters ministry has not been able to greet our members and guests as they enter into doors of our sanctuary. Brothers and sisters, Mrs. Johnson, it's hard to believe that today is the 12th Sunday that our ushers ministry has not been able to assist our members and guests to find a seat, whether in the lower tier, whether in the upper tier of this our sanctuary. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, brother and sister Bates, it is hard to believe that today, Yolanda, today, Keith, uh, is the 12th week that I, as your pastor, have not been able to see many of you, if not most of you, and that's been really tough. It's been 12 weeks since I've seen many of you. It's been 12 weeks since I've seen most of you. It's been 12 weeks since I've, shake, since I've shaken your hand or uh, uh, hugged your necks. And ladies and gentlemen, for someone like me who's a pastor who loves people, it's been really difficult and tough for me. But it's all because of this national pandemic. It's all because of COVID-19. It's all because of this coronavirus that's affecting, all, that's affecting people all over our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, this virus, Sister Baptiste, is contagious. Uh, this virus, uh, Sister Landry, is lethal. This virus, uh, it, the Nevels, is deadly. However, my brothers and my sisters, as contagious Donna and Everett as COVID-19 has been, as lethal as COVID-19 has been, uh, 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 as, as, as deadly as COVID-19 uh, uh, has been, ladies and gentlemen, on last week, another virus was exposed uh, in our nation. Todd and Karen, another virus was exposed uh, in our state. Another virus was exposed in our As contagious as COVID-19 has been, as lethal as COVID-19 has been, as deadly as COVID-19 has been, on last week, all of us, if not most of us, uh, 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 realized saw another virus that was exposed in our nation. Another virus that was exposed in our state. Uh, another virus that was exposed in our sinners. Hence the subject of today's sermon Another deadly virus. Like the coronavirus, ladies and gentlemen, the virus of racism is alive and well in black communities all over America. I need to say that one more time. Like the coronavirus, but Schofield, the virus of racism, Pastor Sam, the virus of racism, Pastor Will, Pastor Matt, Pastor Thomas, the virus of racism is alive and well in black communities all across America, leading to the senseless, sad, and shocking debts of African Americans all across our nation. We saw it up front and center last week in Minneapolis, Minnesota, when a white police officer named Derek Chauvin pushed his knee against the neck of an African American man by the name of George Floyd for almost nine seconds as he laid handcuffed on the face down on a public street shouting, I can't breathe, I, I can't breathe, I, I can't breathe. Then in full view of a gathering crowd, George Floyd suffered. George Floyd, Floyd was suffocated. George Floyd was uh, smothered face down in full view of a gathering crowd and even worse in front of three 
of the police officers who did nothing to stop the senseless, who did nothing to stop the shocking, who did nothing to stop the sad death of another African American while the whole scene was being filmed on somebody's cell phone. Will Smith the actor said it best, and the former rapper said it best when Will Smith said this week, racism isn't getting worse in America. It has always been bad. However, the only difference now is being filmed. Racism has always been bad of America. Racism has always been a problem in America. The only difference now that is being filmed. Jim Ewers, one of our members who sits over here to my right, each and every Sunday morning, each and every Wednesday night, uh, Jim Ewers, one of our members and a prolific author whose articles are published all over the country, said it this way when I talked to him. Pastor, being a black man in America is dangerous and deadly. Let me say that again. Being a black man in America is dangerous and deadly. And, and, and Jim, you are so right, my brother, because of racism, Black lives are being killed uh, all over America. Hence, uh, uh, let me give you the updated list. Trevon Martin in Florida. Tamar Rice in Ohio. Mike Brown in Missouri. Eric Gardner in New York. Terrence Crutcher in Oklahoma. Walter Scott in South Carolina. Philando Castillo in Mississippi. I mean, in Minnesota, Alton Sterling right up the road from here in Baton Rouge, Amon Osbury in Georgia, and now, as we've seen last week, George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And those are just the ones we know about. Those are just the ones we know of. Those are just the ones that we've seen on film. Those are just the ones that we've seen on social media. But ladies and gentlemen, because of racism in our nation, black lives are being taken needlessly each and every week and month. And what makes no sense of this last killing uh, in Minneapolis last week, as I found out when we were doing staff prayer on, I think it was Thursday or Friday, Pastor, the last Friday, the thing that makes no sense is that at one time, George Floyd and Derek Chauvin were co-workers at a nightclub. When they said that, and I, I was blown away. George Floyd, the guy who was on the ground pleading, I can't breathe, and the white police officer, Derek Chauvin, who had his knee on his neck shouting, I can't breathe, it would find out that there were co-workers at one time. George Floyd was a bouncer in a club, and uh, Derek Chauvin was a security officer in the same club. They knew each other. That's the sad thing about it. How do you do that to a former co-worker? How do you do that to somebody you knew? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, racism is alive and well in America. Brothers and sisters, I know we are trying our best to get through this coronavirus. I know we're trying our best uh, to get through this COVID-19. However, brothers and sisters, the fact is we have another deadly virus called racism that we're also dealing with at the same time. So much so that we're watching protesters of all religions and of all backgrounds uh, and of all ages uh, unite together and say with a united voice, enough is enough is enough. Valerie Jefferson, all oh, Lord Bertrand, uh, Brother Scott, Tim and Inez, uh, with Bobby, we're, we're seeing protesters all over our nation, all races and all backgrounds and all ages uniting together in our city streets with a unified voice saying enough uh, is enough. Some protesters are peaceful. Some protesters are violent, but all of them are saying uh, enough uh, is enough is enough. Brothers and sisters, when will we realize that we're all in this together. Let me say that again. When thou will we realize, when John, when we realize, when I will, when will we realize man, that we're all in this together? When will we realize that there is only one race and that's the human race? When will that sink in our minds? 
When will we understand that? When a uh, cookie will sink in our minds that we're all in this together? When will we realize that there's only one race and that's the human race? Of course, we have different ethnicities. We have Africans, we have Anglos, uh, we have Asians, we have Hispanics, we have Indians, we have Arabs, we have Jews, uh, different ethnicities. But ladies and gentlemen, we're all part uh, of one race uh, and that's the human race. More importantly, we're all human beings are equally created in the image and the likeness of God. That's why Genesis 1 and 26 says, then God said, let us make man after our image. That's why Genesis 1 and 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him male and female. God created us. That's why John 3.16 says, Loretta, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have a mark and shall be all everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, gospel of the world, and the world includes uh, all ethnic groups. Uh, therefore, we must together stand against racism. We must together stand against prejudice. We must together stand against bigotry. We must together stand uh, against hatred. We must together stand uh, against violence. We must together stand uh, against abuse of power. We must together stand against discrimination because we all were created in the image and the likeness of God. Sister Davis, I say that one more time. We were all created in the image and the likeness of God. The songwriter said it best, praise team, red, yellow, black, and white, we're all precious in his sight. Therefore, the question of the hour is, how can we deal with this other deadly virus called racism? We've been instructed by the CDC how to deal with the coronavirus. We've been instructed by the CDC how to handle cotton the coronavirus. Wear masks when you go in public. Social distance one another. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Cough and sneeze uh, in your elbow. All of these, if follows, should help us deal with this coronavirus. But what about this other virus called racism? What about this other virus that's affecting our nation called racism? How should you and I deal, particularly in the body of Christ, with this virus? Well, just like the CDC has given us ways on how to deal with the coronavirus, the B-I-B-L-E tells us how to deal with the virus against racism. I, I, I like that. Can I say that one more time, guys? Just like the CDC has given us ways on how to deal with the coronavirus, Joanna, the B-I-B-L-E tells us how to deal with the virus called uh, racism. So, Sister Branch, here in our text, I want to give us four things that we need to understand. Sister Patterson, Sister Crump, are we going to deal? This be it, Mario, are we going to deal? Dallin, are we going to deal with racism? Brothers and sisters, in order... Lynette, to deal with this virus called racism. Brothers Floyd and Kenner, there are four facts that we must all understand. In order to deal with this virus called racism, there are four facts, Elizabeth, that we must all understand. The first fact, Sister Bender, that we must understand is, number one, life is short. We're going to deal with this virus called racism. The first thing we got to understand that life is short. Look at the first part of verse 12 in Romans chapter 5. The Bible says, the scripture says, Brian, the word of God says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the first fact that you need to understand to deal with racism is the fact is that life is short. Therefore, sin entered into this world through one man. Brothers and sisters, sin entered the world because of a decision that Adam and Eve made uh, to disobey God in Genesis chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, because of that one decision of disobeying God, uh, sin has now entered into our society. And because of that, life is short. It was never God's intention for mankind to die. When God put Adam and Eve 
there in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, it was God intended for them to live uh, forever and forever and forever. It was never God's intention for mankind to die. God intended for Adam and Eve to live forever and forever the rest of their lives. However, as soon as Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating from the forbidden tree, the process of death began. As soon as they ate, as soon as they disobeyed God, as soon as they did what God told them not to do, the process of that began. In other words, our days began to be numbered. Think about it. Every day when you and I wake up, our body begins to remind us that life is short. Young people, don't y'all laugh. Y'all going to get there one day. But all of us old folk in here, amen, except for Pastor Will, amen, uh, 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 all of us as young people, our body reminds us, Brother Scofield, that, that life is short. Your eyes start going bad. It's a reminder that life is short. When your hair starts falling out, you either cut it off or get a weed, whatever it is, it's yours, amen? Uh, it's, it's a reminder that life is getting short. When our teeth start falling out, we got to go to a dentist more often. It's a reminder that life is short. When your steps are getting slower and slower every day, when Elizabeth and I first moved into our home, uh, right there on Nottaway and uh, Bourbon and, and Bullard, uh, uh, we used to run up the steps, man. We used to run, we had a two-story house. We used to run up the steps and run down the steps. Now we're holding our backs. Say, oh, Lord, uh, should we think about getting a one-story? Amen. <laughs> because our steps are now getting slower. Uh, uh, when, you're, when you need a cane to, take a, uh, to walk where you have to go, it's a reminder that life is short. When your nightstand starts to look like a pharmacy. I heard all those laughs from behind me. When your nightstand starts to look like a pharmacy, you got every medicine you can buy. Amen. Uh, it's a reminder that life is getting short. We need a walker to help you to get around. It's just a reminder that life is getting short. Ladies, when that figure eight shape becomes a two liter, it's just a reminder that life, I ain't talking about you, Elizabeth. Girl, you still look good. Amen. Even when you're at 60 or something years old. Uh, but ladies, when that figure eight turns into a two liter, it's a reminder that life is getting short. Brothers, don't you laugh when your ass become flabs. It's a reminder, guys, that life is getting short. That's why James says in James 4 and 14, for what is man? I mean, for what is your light? It's even a vapor that appears for a little while and vanishes away. That's like you see smoke coming from a cigarette or pipe and, and you see it at one moment and then it's gone. That's like boiling some water on a stove and the steam comes up and it blows away. You see it for a moment and then it's gone. Well, that's what the Bible say how life is. James said life is like a vapor that appears for little time and vanishes away. Listen, no matter how old a person is when they die to those family members left behind to them, their loved one has died too soon. I've done funerals for 30 some years at this church. I, I've done funerals for 70 years old and 80 years old and 90 years. I don't care how old a person is when they die to those grieving family members, it was still too short. For their mom, it was still too short. For their dad, it was still too short. I saw how the parents, I mean, how, how children grieve and how grandchildren grieve, even though God has blessed their loved one with a long life in their 70s and 80s and 90s, but still to those family members, ladies and gentlemen, life is too short. And because of the decision of one man, sin entered into the world, and because of that decision, life is short. But then there's a second thing in order to deal with this virus called racism. There's a second fact that you must understand about life. Not only life is short, but the second fact about life is that death is sure. We're going to deal with this reality of racism. Not only must we understand that life is short, but secondly, Sister Smith, secondly, Sister Donna Lopez, we must understand that life, that death is sure. Look at the second part of verse 12. The Bible said, therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, here it is, and death through sin. Hank and Sheila and death through sin. Wilma, Napoleon and Mary and death through Carl and Kathy and death through sin. If you're going to understand what we're going through, you need to understand that life is short. But secondly, 
death is sure. Brothers and sisters, the sad reality is that long before Adam and Eve disobeyed God, God had already warned them about the consequence of their disobedience. Long before they ate of the tree, God had already warned them. God had already told them, listen, you can have everything you want in this garden except that one tree over there. God warned them of the consequence of their disobedience. In Genesis 2 and 17, God said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you should not eat of it. From the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Brothers and sisters, the fact of the matter is none of us are here to stay. That's why Hebrews 9 and 27 said, it is appointed unto man once to die. Every last one of you watching this broadcast, every last one of you listening to this sermon, every last one of us have an appointed time uh, uh, to die. The Bible says it is appointed unto man uh, once to die. Death is sure. In other words, all of us have an appointed time uh, to die, and it's an appointment that you and I must keep listening. You can cancel your appointment with your doctor. You can cancel your appointment with your dentist. You can cancel your appointment with your counselor. You can cancel your appointment with your hairstylist. You can cancel your appointment with your barber. You can cancel your appointment with your mechanic. If something comes up, you can always reschedule. You can always call them for another date. However, ladies and gentlemen, debt is an appointment that you and I cannot reschedule. Yes, do all that you can to take care of the body that you have. Uh, do all that you can to take care of the temple that God has given us. Do all that you can to live right uh, and eat right uh, and exercise right and get proper rest. But the fact of the matter is all of us have an appointed time uh, of death. Uh, we don't know the day. We don't know the hour. We don't know when. Uh, we don't know where. We don't know how. However, brothers and sisters, because of the decision of Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3, debt is sure. Nobody escapes. Nobody gets around. I don't care how rich, how poor, how influential, what your, decision, what your degree may be. All of us are, are, are common when it comes to this thing called debt. Genesis chapter 3 has made it known that when Adam and Eve sinned, debt is sure. All of us one day would die, which leads to the third fact that you must understand in order to deal with this virus called racism. Number one, life is short. Number two, death is sure. Number three, sin is the cause. Sin is the cause. Look at the last part of verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread, here it is, to all men. Because all sin. My wife, look what it says. Because all, because all, brothers and Sydney, because all sin. Life is short. Death is sure. Sin, brother Noah, is the cause. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible say all have sinned. Brothers and sisters, please don't miss that. Please don't miss those last three words of this verse. Of verse 12, the Bible said, because all sin. That's why Romans 3 and 10 says, there's none righteous, no, not one. That's why Romans 3 and 23 said, for all have sinned uh, and fallen short of the glory of God. That's why Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. Brothers and sisters, it's because of sin that robbers rob. It's because of sin that rapists rape. It's because of sin that thieves steal. It's because of sin that bullies bully. It's because of sin that children are molested. It's because of sin that murderers murder. It's all because of sin, ladies and gentlemen. It's because of sin that good police become bad police. It's because of sin that good lawyers become bad bad lawyers. It's because of sin that good judges become bad judges. It's because of sin that good preachers become bad preachers. It's because of sin that good people become bad people. It's all because of, of sin. It's because of sin that we have racism. It's because of sin that we have prejudice. It's because of sin that we have bigotry. It's because of sin that we have hatred. It's because of sin that we have violence. It's because of sin that we have discrimination. It's it's because of sin that we have abuse of power. It's because of sin that a handcuffed man by the name of George Floyd, life can be taken away from him by a racist cop while he cried out, I can't 
breathe. He was never taught that in the academy. He was never taught that by his boss. He was never taught that in police training. He did that and stood on that man's neck with his knee because of sin. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, life is short. That is sure. Sin is is the cause, and because sin is the cause, uh, all have sinned uh, and fallen short of the glory of God, and that's why we have discrimination. That's why we have racism. That's why we have bigotry. That's why we have hatred. That's why we have violence. That's why we have discrimination. Because of sin and because we have an enemy called Satan, who's the enemy of God, therefore he's the enemy of everything God ordained. Ladies and gentlemen, sin is the cause for the reason that we're going through what we're going through with this coronavirus but also sin is the cause of what we're dealing with with this other virus called uh, racism. And then finally, in order to deal with this virus called racism, there's one more fact that you and I must understand. Fact number one, life is short. None of us are here to stay. Death is sure. All of us will one day die. Third fact, sin is the cause. All have sinned. And falling short of the glory of God. But hey, don't, don't, don't turn me off until you hear the fourth fact. Life is short. Death is sure. Sin is the cause. But number fourth fact, Christ is the cure. Christ is the cure. Christ is the cure. Christ is the cure. Look at the Bible said in verse 15. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many died... Much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, by the grace of one man, by the grace of one man. Brenda Houston, by the grace of one man. David and Paulette, by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ abounded to many. Yes, life is short. Yes, death is sure. Yes, sin is the cause. But ladies and gentlemen, Christ is the cure. Brothers and sisters, I am convinced that the Bible is true. Preachers, I'm convinced that the scripture is true. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced that the word of God is true. Preachers and deacons and deaconess, I am convinced, Brother Sam Lee, uh, uh, Sister LaShawn, Sister Latoya, I am convinced, Lonnie and, and Charles, uh, I am convinced, Jerome and John Quill, I am convinced, uh, Sister Smith, I am convinced that the Bible, that the word of God is true. For the Bible says, the scripture says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, therefore, Willie and Sandra, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Uh, all things now become new. Let me say that again. I am convinced the Bible says if anybody's in Christ, he is, Sister Mercadell, a new creature. All things have passed away. Uh, all things now become new. I need to say that one more time. Uh, I am convinced that the Bible is true, that the Bible is real, that the Bible is accurate. If anybody, if any man uh, is in Christ, uh, all things have passed away. Way, uh, all things now become new. In other words, my brothers and sisters, no matter the ailment, Christ is the cure. No matter the issue, Christ is the cure. No matter the stronghold, Christ is the cure. No matter the addiction, Christ is the cure. No matter the mentality, Christ is the cure. No matter your plight, no matter your situation, no matter your past, uh, no matter your track record, I am convinced that Christ is the cure. Yes, Christ is the cure for the alcoholic. Christ is the cure for the adulterer. Christ is the cure for the backslider. Christ is the cure for the bigot. Christ is the cure for the child molester. Christ is the cure for the drug addict. Christ is the cure for the homosexual. Christ is the cure for the game banger. Christ is the cure for the gambler. Christ is the cure for the robber. And yes, Christ is the cure for the rapist, for the racist. Christ is the cure for the racist. How do we deal with this other virus called racism? People need to know Jesus Christ uh, as Lord and Savior. I assure you that if police, Derek, if police officer Derek Chauvin would have been a Christian, if Derek Chauvin would have been a believer, if Derek Chauvin would have been a follower of Jesus Christ, George Floyd would still be alive today 
if that, if that police officer would have been a Christian, if he would have been a child of God, George Floyd would still be, he may have been arrested, but he still would have been alive because Christ is the cure. Christ is the cure. Fred, how can you say that with such assurance? Because I'm a living witness that if any man is in Christ, I said I'm a living witness that if any man is in Christ, I said I'm a living witness that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Uh, all things now become new. Yeah, listen, y'all see me now. Y'all see me preaching in the pulpit. Y'all see me now, Pastor Franklin Avenue Baptist Church. Yeah, y'all see my glory, but y'all don't know my story. Let me say that again. Y'all see my glory, but y'all don't know my story. I wasn't always in the pulpit. Wasn't always carrying my Bible. Wasn't always sharing about Jesus Christ. At one time, I was too mean to live, not fit to die, going to hell, uh, and enjoying the ride. Uh, but one day in Charity Hospital, Brother Louis Bologna told me about a man named Jesus uh, who can change my life uh, and change my direction uh, and change my future. And y'all know what I did? Uh, I said, y'all know what I did? I came to Jesus uh, just as I was. Uh, I was weary, worn, and sad, uh, and I found in him uh, a resting place, uh, and he has made me glad. Uh, oh, brothers and sisters, I am convinced, I'm a living witness, that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Listen, I know you're hurt. I'm hurt. I know you're angry. I'm angry. I know you're mad. I'm mad. I know you're upset. I'm upset. I know you're in mourning. I'm in mourning about the racism in our nation. But just as you've gotten the facts of the coronavirus, you must understand. You must understand. You must understand the facts about the virus called racism. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation and George Floyd would be alive today except for the sin of racism so how do we deal with the virus of racism we must understand the facts of life the facts of life is life is short death is sure sin is the cause but Christ is the cure ladies and gentlemen in other words Jesus is the answer for the world today. Not the police department, not the judges. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Not the mayors, not the governor, not the president. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. And until mankind understands that, and until mankind realizes that the only way we can change this world is when people have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we will always, unfortunately, deal with the Derek Chauvins of this world. Life is short. Death is sure. Sin is the cause. Christ is the cure. Let him in today. Let him in today. Let him in today. He will come in this day. Open up your heart and let the Lord come in. He'll change your mindset. He'll change your heart. He'll change your thinking. He will change your life. And that's how to deal with the racism, with the, that's how to deal, I'm sorry, with the virus called racism. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for Minneapolis. Let's pray for our cities, our state, and our country to remind America that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Father, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you for the privilege and opportunity to share your word. God, we've had president after president. We've had governors after governors. We've had mayors after mayors. Judges after judges. Police superintendents after police superintendents. Police departments after police departments. 
But God, we still are dealing with the virus called racism. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will put a fire under the body of Christ, a fire under churches all over our nation to understand the importance of sharing the gospel to all nations. God, I pray that we will understand that we're all a part of the human race. Yes, different ethnicities. We're all part of the human race made in the image and in the likeness of God. Help us to share the gospel, to change the lives of people because Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. No man come to the Father but by him. And we'll be careful, God, to give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for all that you've done, what you're doing right now, what you promise you will continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen. My brother, my sister, we're living in some perilous times. We're living in some difficult times, <clears throat> not only because of COVID-19, this coronavirus, but also because of this virus called racism. And the fact of the matter, things won't get any better until people see the reality that only Jesus can change the mindset of a bigot. Only Jesus can change the mindset of a racist. Only Jesus can change the mindset of a murderer, of a gangbanger. Only Jesus can change the heart of people that's wicked and that's devious and that's out to destroy. Satan is behind it all. He's come to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. As our praise team sings, we want to extend an invitation. And the invitation comes in the word of this song. Jesus is the answer. Brother Rainey, for the world today. He's the answer, Lionel. He's the answer, Giovanni. He's the answer. Sister Tony Scott Green, for the world today. Sister Aguilar, for the world today. And so if you're watching this broadcast and you're wondering how can things get better, Jesus is the answer. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. It doesn't matter what neighborhood you live in. It doesn't matter what side of the track you live on. It doesn't matter what school you attended. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have. It doesn't matter if you got a two-parent family or one-parent family. Jesus is the answer for the world today. And you have an opportunity right now to make a decision for him. On your screen right now, there's a number, 504-488-8488, extension 312. You can call that number for one of four reasons. One, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you're a lost sinner and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you need to understand life is short. Death is sure. Sin is the cause. But Christ is the cure. Open up your heart and let the Lord come in. Ask Jesus to come into your life. He's the answer. He's the answer for everything that we're dealing with in this nation. And he's the answer for the void that's in your life. You can know him for yourself today by asking him to come into your life. Just repeat this short prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess my sin. I confess that I can't do it by myself. I've messed up. I've made mistakes. I'm lost. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. God, the preacher just told me that Christ is the cure. So Christ, if you are the cure, come into my life and cure me of all these things that are affecting me in this life. Make me a new creature. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you said it with your heart, believe it in you, and you said it with your mouth, believe it in your heart, Jesus Christ will make you a new creature. That's the first invitation. The second reason you should call 504-488-8488, extension 312, 
If you are saved, you're born again, but you need a church home. You need somewhere to grow and develop in the things of God. Well, we invite you to be a part of our family here at Franklin Avenue Baptist Church. As I say every Sunday, we're not a perfect church, but we're striving every day to be the church that God has called you to be. And you can be a part of our family. Matter of fact, on June the 20th, right here in this sanctuary, you can come with the rest of the people as Pastor Thomas will teach you in our new members class. Just call that number. Say, I want to join Franklin Avenue. I want to be a part of, our, of the family of FABC. Call that number, and I'll let you know. I'll call you. That's my personal uh, 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 number here at the church, my personal extension. I'll call you and let you know what you need to do. You also may hear from Pastor Thomas or others on the uh, uh, support team. But we want you to know that you can be a part of our family at FABC. Our third invitation, you're a backslider. You turned your back on the law like many of us have done. Listen, you can come back home. You can come back home. You can come back home today. The Spirit of God says, come. The bride says, come. Whosoever will, let him come and drink up the water of life freely. Listen, God loves you. He really does. And God has a plan just for your life. And then our fourth and final invitation. Just before Pastor Young comes and gives us our benediction. If you just stand in the need of prayer, say, Preacher, I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm upset, I'm having thoughts of doing crazy things that I know I shouldn't do. I need you to pray for me. And I tell you, call that number, and I will pray with you, and I will pray for you. 504 488 8488, extension 312. And I promise you, your life will never again be the same. God bless you. God keep you. Father, thank you for those right now who are going to be calling that number. Some for salvation. Some as a backslider. Some for church home. Some, God, they need to know you as Lord and Savior of their lives. Some want to be a part of FABC. But whatever the decision, move in their heart, God, and move in their lives. Now, God, we pray that you will move in this nation, heal our land of COVID-19, heal our land of coronavirus, but also heal our land of the virus of racism. And we'll be careful to give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. For all that you've done, what you're doing right now, what you promise you will continue to do, in Jesus' name.